Hello Guardians and welcome to Destiny Reset episode 137. This podcast is about anything and everything related to the Destiny franchise. If you love playing Destiny 2 as much as we do, you're in the right place. This reset, we take a deep dive into the preview for the March 27th update, we wonder how the world will be without a tracker, and discuss what we would like to see in player investment and rewards for the next expansion. Hello, Guardians, and welcome. It's Arrow Knight and, of course, Cyborg Sasquatch. How's it going, dude? Hello. Hello. How's it going? It is great. Um, busy week. Got some gaming in, though. Uh, got some uh, Got some gaming in. How about you? It's always a good sign. Yeah. Fit yeah. in some, some days, some evenings. The question days. is, should we have been sleeping? Is the yes. I should have been sleeping. <laughs> Usually oh, the the case some late nights this weekend that i should have for many games <laughs> <laughs> exactly but that is a always a problem yes but uh yeah man there's uh some interesting news this week and gameplay to talk about yes i don't think we sure. have any announcements this week now we're on a streak of no announcements. crazy brewing yeah everything's in the works right it's now chill time when it's time mm. yes so let's get into some news, man. Really juicy, super juicy TWAB this week. Dude, the TWABs, as of late, they've been meaty. A lot of stuff. Yes, <laughs> a lot of stuff. Basically, so immediately much, become the main topic of the show. <laughs> uh-huh. So much that we're just going to probably just talk about the major points. Right, yes. Not only is this a preview of patch notes that we're going to get again later, um... I don't think it's a finished product, and we also can't play it. To really right, exactly. Comment on it, so everything is just speculation at this point. Yeah, to go over every bullet point, maybe with patch notes, but like you said, this is this is like a rough draft of what yeah. we should be getting. Right. So, so they mention uh, update one point one point four. Uh, is in development, I believe, which is the next update. March 27th. Yes. Right around the corner, like two weeks. Yeah, it's crazy. Two weeks till we go fast. Go fast update. Yep. And so they had a couple of the the Bungie team and the TWAB to talk about um, a more granular look at what's coming to the sandbox. There's a great pun there. (laughs) If you didn't catch that when you read it. Senior Crucible designer Kevin Yanes and design lead Josh Hamrick talk about what's going to be going on. Um, some some major ones, of course, that we know about, you know, changes to Iron Banner 6v6. We've got Rumble, eight-player Rumble. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mayhem's going to be in a, in a weekly rotation in the uh, weekly playlist, or whatever it's going to be called. They fixed the Nova Bomb glitch in Mayhem. That's Sorry, good. Warlocks. And so that, that'll make that instantly more fun. <laughs> yes. Sorry, Warlocks. Uh, Congratulations, everyone else. Yeah. Uh, they they give some credence to community feedback, such as uh, time to kill and team shooting. In Dude, the that, that was huge. Yeah, that they they uh, threw that in there word for word. It's, a, it's clear that the community felt there were two key areas for improvement. What you just said, they specifically mentioned time to kill and team shotting. Yeah, so one sentence I'd like to discuss here is, <clears throat> so it says, does this mean you're changing the time to kill? And they say, when we looked at the core feedback on time to kill in the Crucible, we saw that it mostly stemmed from a lack of excitement or spikes of intensity you all came to expect from a Destiny experience. Do you agree with that sentence? You know, I've thought a lot about it since I read it. It's I, like a, a loaded... Yeah. yeah. When I immediately... or, or When I initially read it, I'm thinking, man, how are they not going to change time to kill? You know, and, and with that said, you can only imagine you can't just tweak a, 
uh, slider and say, lower the time to kill. There's a lot more to it than that. And yeah. th- but then I think to myself, man, they're, which we'll get into, they're changing all these other things instead of whatever they need to do to decrease um, time to kill or increase, however you want to phrase it, shorten it. Um, but, you know, I really, I'm going with them on this because I feel like a lot of the PVPers specifically that I've listened to over the last month or two have talked about not being able to flank, not being able to move, not basically not having much mobility, and then you throw mm-hmm. the team shotting on top of that. I really do see what they're saying here. Like I, I get that changing these other things in this go fast update, which when we get into some of these, you can clearly see they're speeding things up. Um, that it could substantially make the crucible feel different. Um, granted. When it's all said and done, you're not killing anybody faster, but I think it definitely may feel like you are. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Throw it back at you. So, yeah, for, and for some more uh, context here, if you haven't read the TWAB, um, they're doing some things to try to increase the pace of the Crucible beyond changing mm-hmm. time to kill that they're not touching. In many um, ways they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, well... You know, they are making adjustments to some archetypes. Mm-hmm. Um, I think like hand cannons and pulse rifles and some things are getting some adjustments, but they're they're doing other things that affect how the game is paced in the Crucible. Uh, respawn and revive times. Uh, power ammo respawn timers are going to be adjusted. Uh, ammo counts. Um, enemy players now drop power ammo on death right. across the board. That man, that's a send back to like, yeah, year one, one the thing, crucible. Yeah, I mean, all the way down to that power ammo. You know, um, I still don't know if that's enough. It, you know, a lot of people are wanting um, all players to get power ammo again. I feel like that's too far the other way. I really feel like all of this has to land comfortably between Destiny One and Destiny Two. Or we'll be right back where we were when everybody was saying there was too yeah. many abilities and all that so, stuff. So they're yeah. doing all these things, and then they're doing something else that isn't quite defined yet totally with with movement. Right. Movement in certain supers, um, uh, st- like the the base mobility, like your how fast you run. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some big changes I saw to Hunter's with their dodge and different things and their visibility. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it's tough to, to say how it's going to play with this many changes. Right. So, okay, so, so all that be in the context, this is what they're saying they're going to do. I'm just, I can't help but imagine a scenario where everybody gets faster. And so we spend more time like literally in cat and mouse in bob and weave situations because everybody's going to be faster and be able to get in the game more and have more power ammo and this and that, but you, it's still going to take the same amount mm-hmm. of TTK for lack of a better concept here to kill a person. Right. And so in, when it takes, you know, a certain number of headshots or body shots with certain weapons or, you know, how many melees or combinations, grenade melees, you know, headshots, whatever, when, when that doesn't change, but all of a sudden people can escape from you quickly or you can escape from people quickly. Right. It, I almost wonder if it's going to make the game feel slower. Well, I know a lot of people, you know, their main concern right now is it, it does feel like the bob and weave. You shoot, you don't, you know, it, it takes too much to kill them. So they hide, then you hide, then they hide. Um, you know, I, I, you know, some other feedback, you know, people really miss that three tap hand cannon. I heard that mentioned this week. Mm. And I, I, I mean, that was my play style too, uh, when I wasn't using no land, you know, and it's, it's like, I think what you said earlier, we're, we're going to have to play it. You know, we're so used to Bungie making Abs- subtle absolutely. tweaks. They, they make subtle tweaks here and there. These are huge. They know the community wants a major shift in the crucible. And, and I definitely, you know, hearing you say it out loud, I, I can definitely see that. And, and it's very possible that could happen. Um, I do think, you know, with the changes in power ammo, the ability, um, 
cooldown, you know, we throw on those mods and it's two times faster. We get our super 25% quicker, a minute 40, I think is what that pans out to be. Um, again, we'll get into some of these things. I feel like yeah. maybe these little things here and there will directly, um, you know, affect your worry there. I feel like it, maybe it seems those like it's going to play more like destiny one used to play in terms of mm -hmm. the the Abilities. action yeah the action the kinetic the you know the quick reflexes and and the things you've got to have the movement that you're expected to be able to to compensate for but with a slower time to kill and maybe i don't know maybe th that becomes a sweet spot mm -hmm. you know yeah. It's yeah, really I, hard to say. I mean, they're they're playing it and testing it, so mm -hmm. it must feel good. And I know as well that they've been bringing in yes. um, people outside of I Bungie to test that. That's a big deal. Yeah, and usually those people are either part of certain focus groups or they're, you know, high-profile community content creators people like that i know some that have done it in the past you do too mm -hmm. um so hopefully you know that you have to assume that this they, they're playing it and it's it looks good they also embedded a video oh man of what some of the changes look like i mean it looks fun yeah um you know they show they're showcasing the sniper in that if you guys haven't seen it <laughs> yeah. again pull up the twab you know part of that is there's a it fixed an issue with flinch right and that's coming in um mm -hmm. 1.2 right that's coming in may um they're still working on the animation the sniper and stuff the the sniper flinch fix i believe oh that's not coming with this i don't think so i think that's oh, okay. uh yeah that's coming in 1.2 but they show that off and there's so many things going on i'm i'm assuming yeah, they say below you'll find a video pulled from a 1.2 playtest um, that has all the 1.1.4 sniper changes in the new sniper fix. So I'm pretty sure the flinch is coming in 1.2. It says 1.2 preview. But in that video, okay. man, if you go back and watch it, I watched it a couple times. The first time I watched it, I was like, dang, okay, all right, he's getting power ammo. He's got a sniper almost the whole time. He gets one hand cannon kill. But it looks like it's in fast forward after you watch it a couple times. Yeah. And, and again, I think that's, that's, there's so many things that are going to play a part here. Um, but, um, I don't know. It's, we're just going to have to jump in, you know, that somewhere, I can't remember if it was in the TWAB, the Barrett and Hamrick and Kevin, they all went crazy on Twitter after this. There's so many tweets we could mention, but there's just, there's just too many. Um, but I can't remember if it was in one of those tweets or if it was in the TWAB. I couldn't find it again when I was rereading it earlier tonight, but, their TTK, their base time to kill that they're wanting to stay around is what the current go-to weapons give you, which is the autos, the Uriels and the uh, mm -hmm. um, Uriels and the optimal. Uh, optimal, TTK. yeah. So it's like one second ish is where they're wanting to be around. So when you mm -hmm. when you talk about like you said earlier, the the current time to kill and and your concern with the, even with faster movement, I mean, it's we'll see. You know, we'll see. It is crazy to think about. You know, I'll get in there sometimes and melt people, and I'm like, yeah, it's not too bad. You know, all this we've been talking about for months, and then sometimes it's you get in there and it's how like, it's going to be when yeah. everything, it, when literally yeah. everything is faster. Everything. How is. that's going to play. And and you know. we'll get into some other buffs and uh, a nerf or two. And uh, yeah, there's there's so many pieces here. It's going to be kind of wicked to jump in um, and see. Yeah, what there's the it's going like. to make. It's gonna make the whole game feel different and mm -hmm. crucible. Yep. Um, I'm happy about reverting shoulder charge. Can't wait for that. Yes. Mm -hmm. To be used as a movement mode again. Uh, there's some really good changes to Dawnblade that look really awesome. I wonder that what might you thought about this. Play that <laughs> class. I played Dawnblade in Mayhem and had a absolute blast. Mm -hmm. The uh, first time we had Mayhem show up, and I would love for it to be a more viable class in pvp because i really enjoy it yeah um i've been playing so a little hammer titan there. recently so oh yeah it. hammer titan's <laughs> really strong mm -hmm. in destiny 2 uh in pve as well um changes to invisibility and dodge 
uh, smoke updates, some improvements there. And then you had mentioned as well, yeah, supers now recharge a minute 40 That's faster. Cool. Yeah. A cooldown I mean, reduction of 25%. That's, that's significant. It's huge, man. I mean, you're talking now. It's very significant. Two supers a game, probably, if, you, if you're having a decent game. I think that's the sweet spot, and that's what everybody throws out. Is yep. They would like to, and I think that makes sense with you know the links of the the links of the games and if you're really killing it you know the ability to to get up to three or so mm-hmm. you know yep um so i'm excited to see how that plays it i think that's going to be fun and and then mods to grenades um melee and class ability cooldowns have been buff to allow for up to two times faster cooldowns really big changes yeah i mean this could really change how the whole the whole game feels when you're in the crucible and i mean i i just i've had the most fun i think this year playing like the mayhem stuff mm-hmm. <laughs> that i think you know we don't want that just to be the crucible but to find some sweet spot between where we are now and that can I think make a much more fun experience. And so yeah. I'm excited I'm hoping, to try this uh, stuff. Out. The sweet spot, man, is somewhere in between D one and D two. It really is. And I, I hope um I hope they get pretty close to it here. You know, I'm worried because there's so many changes here. Even with their play testing, there's I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on to to unpack in this. There really is loaded up. So and then all you know. these changes to the weapons, pulse rifles, scout rifles, hand cannons, sidearms, SMGs, mm-hmm. linear fusion, shotgun, sniper rifles, grenade li- launchers, assault rifles are all getting everything buffed. Touched. Yeah. yeah. Everything buffed perks but the, are getting but touched. Rifles. Yep. So um then they talk about the mods rework. Um they had mentioned in the last update that they were going to wait and buff ability cooldowns at the same time excuse me, the same time they dropped the mods rework. Um, But they say that over the last few weeks, it's become obvious that the mod rework was going to need more time to come together due to the scope of the changes. So it seems that they're going to split up, you know, those two pieces, Mm -hmm. um, which we already mentioned they're, they're doing some changes to the cooldown mods, the cooldowns that you can get with mods, which I think is great. They they need to be more impactful, you know, for right. them to make sense. Like, I can have, like, three different arc grenade mods or whatever ability charge mods on, on my armor, and it's, it's I can't tell the difference, you know? Mm-hmm. It's yeah. so slow already. Um. So, yeah, I mean, there's... There's so much stuff we can't even talk about at all, but I would encourage you if you um, are interested, go go read through all the TWAB. There's some really exciting changes. Uh, they've got a really cool development preview. Um, it says it has a video pulled from the 1.2.0 playtests that has all the 1.1.4 sniper changes and the new sniper flinch fixes in and working. Mm-hmm. So they're not only fixing the flinch, but there's some some changes like this is a big one. They're increasing PVE damage for all snipers. Yeah, which can be pretty significant in stuff like the raids. Um, increasing Everything's precision multipliers. <laughs> Everything's getting buffed. Increasing aim assist and inventory size. Mm-hmm. Like snipers are going to be a pretty big deal again. I think. Yeah. Oh, and so. we we glossed over another one, dude. Uh, probably the most controversial one in the TWAB, um, the competitive playlist. Oh, yeah. So They're I, I removing the uh, radar. Yeah, uh, dude. The when I read <laughs> when I read this, what did they call it? The tracker? Is that yeah, what they, they called, called it? The I, I like reread it four times because I'm like, okay, I was wait, like, wait. They talk about the radar? Are they, yeah. Uh, hold on a second. So that's that's um you know there's mixed feelings about that. I um 
That's in Always, competitive playlists and yeah, trials just competitive. only. Competitive and trials, which is where, if, if they're going to do it, that's where it should be. You know, my uh, my thoughts on it, you know, everybody always goes back to spooky trials back in Destiny 1. If you didn't experience it for a weekend or two, they took out the radar, um, and it was called spooky trials. And a lot of people didn't have fun that weekend. I specifically remember us having episodes <laughs> after, dude. And the crew I that it. I ran with, yeah, we loved it man we but went a lot of people were just dude, like pissed. i still remember the map uh that weekend asylum was the one with the rotating um object in the middle of the map right is that asylum no 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 no. Oh, what is that map uh you're thinking about uh, uh what is that map with the truck on the other on the one spawn and cave on the other spawn we called it bat cave anyways yeah. dude anomaly. we went anomaly thank you we went like 15 and 0 that weekend in trials. One of us got our scarab. Like it spooky trials was my jam. It was it was our jam for sure. So this doesn't bother me as much as some. I can definitely see where it would. Um taking taking the radar away immediately, you know, we're we're going fast in this update. And a lot of people realized in spooky trials in in many games, people were just camping corners with shotguns, you know, because mm-hmm. obviously no radar will promote that. Now what they're going for here that they say is, is they want their, to, they specifically say in the TWAB early on that they want there to be more, uh, opportunities for hero moments, which is what the content creators and community have mentioned many, many times the last several months. We need more opportunity for those hero moments. And they feel like no radar will allow for more, um, you know, flank, uh, possibilities, you know, things like that. And, I get it, you know, um, as far as like a, an extremely skilled player and, you know, a player that, that isn't quite as skilled as, as that extremely skilled player, I feel like the radar kind of goes both ways. Um, one, it tells that extremely skilled player probably not, you know, the radar in Destiny kind of tells you roughly where you're at. To that extremely skilled player, it tells them exactly where you're at. You know, they they know how to use that radar constantly. So it's, to me, yeah, the it, radar it kinda, in Destiny Two is less um, right. It's less effective than the one we had in Destiny. 1. In Destiny One, so I feel like it kind of goes both ways. You know, it's like if you take that radar out, then that less skilled player maybe has a little bit more of a chance because they're not a uh, 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 little area of a blip on a map. You know, being, well, it puts it puts more on the team. mm Hmm. Um, to work together, communicate right. well. Right. And I think the the downside with this, personally, I think this is an interesting change. I want to play it. I think that I, I will enjoy it with the team. Mm-hmm. I think an un- unnecessary byproduct of this, whether people are going to get used to it or like it or hate it or whatever, I almost can guarantee you competitive, the competitive playlist is going to be more sweaty. It's n- not even that. It's going to be empty, dude. Yeah. The, the well, casual player yeah. that may come to play competitive and solo queue, that's, that's not going to happen anymore. And I, yeah, I agree with you. Um, there will you not know, be people solo queuing and competitive. Yeah. I see, I see what they're going for, but I, I will I enjoy it, it. But I, I, it's, I feel like, in, and they've, they said in here that, um, they know this is a bold change, and basically they say we're ready to react if you don't like it. <laughs> and I, I feel like it's 50-50, man. If I, not I, I 60 think it's 40 a, that it's people a cool won't change, like it. Yeah. But I don't think it's gonna Yeah. It's, I, I think it's gonna negatively impact population and mm-hmm. that's gonna be that's an not issue. a good thing. Yeah. And it's, I feel like, you know, they be... may they may bring it back within a couple weeks. You know, it's it's, <laughs> it's you I, don't I, I don't think it's a it's a bad idea, but I think that mm-hmm. it is it is a a higher barrier of entry right for a player and, and that's and for, yeah. especially for a solo player. Like you can go and queue in solo and competitive and have a fine time playing some of those mo- you know mm-hmm. not yeah. as much the the survival mode, but um you you I can agree. you can do okay. Like you can have a decent time if you're solo queued and you're not in chat with anybody. Mm-hmm. It's not gonna work well at all. Anymore. Right. I agree. <laughs> it you know, and that's that's very true. I didn't think about that aspect of it. And I feel like, you know, if anything, um 
I don't know. I, I I've thought about this this week and it's like, I'm 50, 50. I feel like it may be a week or two and they just, they bring it back due to feedback, which, you know, I, I, I'm confident they'll do if that's the feedback they get. And then I'm thinking like, okay, maybe it doesn't belong in just the general competitive playlist. You know, um, I thought to myself, people can go do quick play, but like you said, we don't want to deter people from playing things. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe it should just be a trials thing. And then I might just keep thinking and I'm like, well, how many times have I mentioned I, it? It just bugs me that so many people never really got to experience trials because it's so sweaty and they don't have a regular team and they never get to experience it. So with what you just said, this makes it even more intense, more sweaty, more, yeah. uh, you know, a higher barrier t- of entry and they're not going to, they're still not going to jump in, you know, and, and I get it's an end game thing, but it's like raids. The, the, the moments you have in trials, uh, whatever skill you are, um, are those moments that are just fantastic. And for people, you know, to think people don't ever experience that, um, like a raid, uh, yeah. just stinks, you know? Yeah. So anyways, it, it, there's such a fine line. Some of these changes, this is probably the most bold one that they threw in this. Everybody read this, these couple paragraphs and we're like, what? <laughs> well, like, part maybe of, part of the maybe issue wait. as well is that. <laughs> Not only is population low as it is, but it's it's this whole double it's a double edged sword in so many ways. Like there's only currently, I mean, there's gonna, it's going to change, but there's just two playlists, mm-hmm. and so if if you're not that type of player, it just eliminated half of the crucible for you, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and and when you're this even. In my scenario, like when you're on and you're trying to play and you have less friends or you have no friends online playing, like you're that much less likely to get with your buddies and queue up and go play competitive one night. Right. You know what I mean? You mm-hmm. got to work harder to find people to play with. And so I don't know. I, I wonder if they shouldn't have just rolled this out in trials to see how it went first, mm-hmm. you know? But we'll see. Like they said, they're they're listening, and you know, they're these aren't permanent. They're not set in stone. Mm-hmm. And I guess it's better to try this stuff now when population is low. Right. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. I don't know. I don't know if it's better to what to do it now or do it when you. have I know like, it's like you want to bring them back into every playlist we have. We're gonna get that additional playlist, and uh, right. yeah, solo queuing and competitive might be interesting. Well, for sure. we'll see how it goes. I'm I'm excited though. Like I I want to try it out. I think it could be fun. Like mm-hmm. I again, I really enjoyed the. Oh, I loved it. The the spooky trials and I I'd couldn't believe many times it, like I wanted yeah. it to come back. When I couldn't believe that after that weekend, like they've got so much feedback of people not enjoying it, and I'm like, this is fantastic. It was it was really divisive. It was it was, there was a yeah. ton of people that were just like, I absolutely hate this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> but yeah. you know, and then it's also just, I think right for some part understand. of that was it was um, you know, like there was no re- revives. I think you're right. Yeah. I can't remember what the mode was called, not hardcore or something, but it was Mm, like... Yeah, what was it? I forget the the word that we had for that mode. Mm -hmm. Man, Man, it was was, a good time, though. It was such a short window, but yeah, so it was even that on top of it. Like, if you died, you're dead. Right. Yeah. I think, or maybe you had one res, or I don't remember. There was some other layer to it. Mm -hmm. Anyways, um... So that's the major sandbox stuff. There's a couple other things they threw out here. Um, one is really cool that we've a lot of people have been asking for this for a while. They're making some changes uh, to the companion app, mm-hmm. um, which they just pushed out on iOS, and I think it's not coming to. Wait, no, it's it is available on Android now. When they published it, it wasn't out on Android. So on Android and iOS on the companion app. Um, they added some more utilities. You can modify shaders, effects, mods, perks, and masterworks of the items in your inventory. Um, you can change mods out. You can change shaders out. Um, if it costs you something, it tells you how much it has to, uh, how much it costs and what you have available. And it, that seems like a small thing, but then they go on to say, this is, a big deal because it's foundational for 
other more advanced stuff like clearing out inventory, uh, vendor purchasing on the go, clearing out all the rare items in your inventory. Um, they mentioned there are, these are all possible scenarios that we're considering for the future to make the most of the system we built. This will also give us the opportunity to enable third-party developers to take advantage of this functionality while providing a secure environment where these actions require your explicit approval. So this could make the companion app like hugely uh, a, a, a much a much more mm -hmm. uh, utilized <laughs> yeah. service, like because to do a lot of that stuff manually, um, why why you're in the UI can be a big pain in the butt. But you know if they can make it so you can like especially if third party apps can can connect to this part of the functionality like just run a command in destiny item manager delete all blues you know like <laughs> yeah <laughs> or you know be sitting uh at lunch and clearing out your your duplicates and stuff i mean it's pretty cool yeah so i agree this is great go check out these uh these new functions in the app and i think it'll be great if they're able to to build on that later i mean this is something people have been asking for since they first put out the companion app they're like why can't i manage actually manage my stuff <laughs> so um destiny player support they talk about um they're still working on an issue with the edz destination emblem and ghost scannables they're working on that uh they talk about wi-fi and people having problems with losing their connection to destiny services if they have wi-fi so if you have a problem like that they have some basic and intermediate tips and information about how you can improve that look out for those microwave ovens well it's really funny because we have a guy uh on my raid team that literally if somebody in his house starts their microwave he gets weaseled <laughs> like it should say like he gets uh toasted That'd yeah i mean like he'll drop and he'll come back and be like yep so and so <laughs> was microwaving a burrito we're like yeah that's great that's, so that's yeah great. if you didn't know it microwave ovens can mess with your wi-fi very important to know watch it yep turn them off unplug them yep they uh they threw up the top scores for the tree of Pob probabilities which was uh if yeah. you're listening, not last reset, the reset before uh, the first week we had nightfall scoring and top score was 226,465. I immediately realized without reading it initially that they're embracing the lost sector <laughs> for me for now, oh. which they address. Um, yeah. Because I saw Datto had gotten like 170 or something. And, and said he didn't use those tactics. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, dude, that, how nostalgic was this, though? Like, little things like this with these top scorers in the TWAB each week um, brings back Bring memories, back. man. Yep. Yep. Just like we used to, to see stuff. from POE. Yep. The old prison um, builders. Yeah, so that was this week at Bungie. Lots and lots of juicy previews for what we're going to see in mm -hmm. two weeks. Yeah, and I'm sure we're going to get more previews, you know, with 1.1.4 and, and at the end of March, March 27th, you know, we're getting the sandbox changes are what a lot of people are waiting for, but we're getting the heroic strike modifiers. We're getting hopefully still the nightfall strike unique rewards. Um, so there, there's several things. This is a big, this is a big one. Um, a lot of people are waiting for this March one. Um, there's going to be, yeah, and this is probably the, the last big one bef before. I guess before we see new content in May, I mean May, yeah, with the other changes. I'm I'm willing to bet as soon as that pushes out that mm -hmm. beginning of April we're gonna start to see Oh yeah. Some news trickle out about uh expansion two, assuming they're still gonna put it out in May like they have Yep. I won't say promise, but at least alluded to. <laughs> yeah, if if they keep it that I, I agree. I bet you we're gonna I mean, we're see not, full we're not fledged far. April april yeah. trailers um usually we get you know early may is is probably when i would expect this to drop so mm -hmm. 
whatever yeah. it's going to be. I'm I'm excited for the ramp up. Yeah, for new content around the corner. Yeah, man. You know, I still, um, you know, they had hinted a while back. I forget it was. I believe it was a tweet, um, maybe from Barrett, um, pretty much all but confirming that some sort of three-player PVE activity was coming to the game, whether it be like a Prison of Elders type thing or something. I think he specifically did respond to like a uh, Prison of Elders type of activity but um i don't know man you know th- this march update's fantastic i mean just to like wrap up wrap up my thoughts i mean this this stuff's gonna be really cool um i still you know think once all this settles in um you know people still want a reason to grind mm-hmm. um and while this may add a lot of fun and replayability as far as immediate you know play time in the game and the crucible things like that i think it's going to make it re- rewarding in the sense of like the actual playing um i really do hope well, they they continue to to do like these nightfall strike unique rewards and stuff like that which they are you know we see it on the roadmap um and um, all this stuff gets better legs when there's an expansion or something that's right coming alongside it right you know that so you could so let's say you haven't been playing and you come back to expansion two and now you have all these added features to stuff like the nightfall and heroic strikes and Mm -hmm. uh you know all the updates to the sandbox and xyz um you're gonna get a lot more out of the game and the progression and what you're playing as part of you know normally playing and doing you know uh milestones and and all that stuff it'll be that much more fun Exactly, and so it makes the, the whole experience better. So, you know, the, it's like little pieces over these past few months, adding these things. But then when you kind of you'll see the sum of them all together when we get you know May expansion and how it's mm-hmm. everything becomes more fun and a better investment of your time. I think that's going to be the payoff. Oh, it's so. yeah, it's going to be huge. Yeah, the next few months, um, I I would venture to say, you know, like we've talked about all the way to the fall, we are. Uh, we are well into um, progress for Destiny 2 for the community. Um, this March update is going to be big. Like you said, May is going to be big. I would say pretty soon we're going to start seeing, um, before too long, we'll start seeing what's on the uh, roadmap for a fall patch along with uh, that expansion. And, um, you know, it's... it's um, it's a road to get there, you know. We're well into D 2s release, um, but I I think by fall, man, like you said, when you put all this stuff together, um, you know, I was thinking this week we'll get into it and reset, but playing Iron Banner and things like that. I've been working on different builds, you know, different uh, subclass gear and stuff. I've I've been having fun with the current game, you know, and and I know a lot of people are taking a little bit of a break. Um, so just to see this stuff on there, um, I mean, it, it gets me excited and I hope at each tier of it, um, it brings more and more players back to the game. Yeah. And, and like you said, the, alongside an expansion, um, of any kind is, is when it's going to be a, a bit more substantial as far as bringing, bringing guardians back to it. So, um, yeah, I when, think when are people we come back in to May. get, uh, ranked. Is that supposed to come in May? That's in May. Yep. That's yeah, coming so, in I mean, May There's going to be so yep. much. Yep. Stuff going down when that pushes out, um, mm-hmm. you know, two months ish from now. Yep. There's going to be so much more to play. It's, it's going to And they, be fun. they've kind of pushed back this expansion too, right? Because we were initially anticipating. Well, they never it. really said it. Said. I mean, yeah. I, I hope really they did. Date, but I think people expected sooner than May. Yeah. And, yeah. and I hope they did. I hope it was March, April, because if it, if we gave them a couple more months to, to throw this stuff out and um, um, give us what they're giving us by May, along with a more realized expansion to, you know, deeper than Curse of Osiris. Um, we, you know, we know. Well, and I think some it's of the really that important that they do. Exactly. Yep. Execute um, on that. I mean, it's, yeah, it's not going to be pretty in the community. I suppose if, if it's not a better quality piece of content, mm-hmm. you know, I'm not saying that, Curse of Osiris didn't have its merits and they're I mean I had a lot of fun playing stuff, but yeah. I, I think they've got to do more with this next one. Well, and if dude, they can execute yeah. the new content, if it's engaging, if it's good, if they if they bring some some of the magic back, you know, yeah. That we yeah. expect alongside all these additions and some mm-hmm. of the new features we're gonna see. 
I think it'll really revitalize things. Yeah. You know? I just keep thinking about, you know, there's so many different facets of it. And, um, you know, I go back to things like the Nightfall Strike Unique Rewards. You know, I think about the Forge in Curse of Osiris. Uh, I worked on that a little bit this week. And, you know, I, I, I talked about it in, in that community checkpoint video I did as far as like random roles and stuff like that. And them not having to be as substantial as they were in Destiny 1, but some sort of randomization that, that gives us a reason to grind for certain gear and weapons and things like that. And it, I thought about like the Forge and Curse of Osiris this week. That, there's a lot of depth to that. There's many verses. There's many layers to that. There's, there's some kind of some, Decent grinding, um, oh, but serious grinding. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, is if if those weapons we get from that are things that we want to hunt down and things we want to grind for, we'll all do it. The thing is, is you know, many of the weapons in the game are slightly different than every other weapon in the game, and you know, like I can say, you it's know, a I lot really of filler. Yeah, right. And I want the um, I want the sidearm, uh, the Curse of Osiris sidearm. I've seen yeah, it's good. I've seen some some videos on that, and it seems pretty potent. But just like all the Destiny we played over the years, if there is a gun that you make us want, it doesn't matter how much grinding it requires, we will play the game to get it. And it to me, I just keep going back to it. It boils down all all this stuff's fantastic. It's great. It's all stepping stones. I think we're headed in the right direction. Um, but the the um, substantial like potency, if you will, of our loot is is a big factor. And, and well, I, I just I think that stuff like that it it doesn't come down to you know whether or not they you know. Oh, they made a poor decision. I really think on that particular aspect of the game, it it comes down to where they're spending their development time. Right. Because we know that when they take time and invest it into making cool weapons, they always have. Mm -hmm. They've always made weapons that are fun to use, to play with, cool perks, you know, interesting combinations of perks and archetypes. And there's still some that shine in the game, but right. when not... you're going to have, an uh, like you're saying, an activity um, like the Weapon Forge, and, you know, 70% of those weapons are just pretty on the outside and ugly on the inside, right. like... It it kind of it kind of leaves it falling flat, and they they really need to take more time in in putting development time into that stuff mm -hmm. to make it worth it. Yeah, you know, yeah. It, it's kind of like phoning it in almost. Right. Well, you know, and it's it's um, you know, you always bring up random roles and things like that, and and that was a reason to grind stuff in Destiny I One. Just but don't even, think even, that's totally the solution, man. Well, so right. Even if they, even if they didn't bring back random roles, if they did what you're hinting at, they have the perks in the game in the game right now to make more potent weapons. Um, you got to be careful because you don't want to, you know, have people running around the same one or two. Um, so they're going to have to do a decent amount of them. Um, but as they bring out expansions, throw in, you know, a, a, just dump in a, a truckload of nicely tuned, well-placed perks on many types of weapons, you know, and, and they're set. That's They are set. Stick to that if that's what they want to do. But like you said, make them uh, take some time and put a little intricacy it into it. It takes time, man. Yeah. And, and of know. course, we know right now they're doing a lot of stuff. And a particular perk on a particular weapon, um, I think we can all agree, um, probably isn't as important right now as, as many of these other systems they're trying to get in the game for us. So, yeah, I just, yeah. at the end of the day, I think that Bungie has a lot of really talented people, but mm -hmm. they absolutely have extremely talented artists, musicians, composers, all these things that make the game look really pretty, but they're not spending enough time on the things that make the game play well. 
yeah. or or replayable at least right now. And I've um, I've delivered this analogy before, but the one thing in the game that changes the core mechanics of like what makes the game fun to play are guns and armor. Right. And when you're phoning it in on how like the only thing that can change how the game plays for you outside of your abilities and things like that is a different gun. Like it gives you a different way to interact with the world, which is shooting stuff. But when you're not providing anything new or novel to that part of the experience, which is the core experience, the things that so many people come back to is like, it's a tight shooter. It's, it's, you know, it's bungee. It's, it works. It feels good. When you're not improving that, then you're losing the core of what makes the game stick, mm-hmm. you know? And when you're just getting the same guns over and over with a different look, like the, they're losing sight of what what makes it fun for people, you know? Right. And I think yeah. they, they've got to deliver on that, and they have before. It's not like they can't. But, right. you know, it well, comes down to, to management and managing their time you know what where resources go and you know what what they're able to do yeah i I feel like they're laying the groundwork for for many systems you know like masterworks i think v3 of masterworks um could answer some of this i mean we're talking about a loot game you know we like to have fun playing it it is fun to play um but we're all we're all hunting loot um that's what got us running vault of glass every week to try to get that vex with the class you know so um, that, that's some of the magic that we're talking about. And, and I agree with you. Um, when, when it's all, all these, all these pieces, um, by May, by fall, um, I think, uh, we'll be well past laying the groundwork and, uh, some of, uh, many of these things will be coming together and hopefully loot is a part of that for sure. For sure. You yeah. had, uh, you had put out a tweet that has a really good question. You tweeted to, uh, Chris Barrett and Dibji, and uh, you asked about, uh, at some point, the, the team had hinted at certain uh, activities guaranteeing Masterwork rewards. Mm-hmm. And uh, so you asked about that, you know, where is there still plans for that? And you did get a response from Chris Barrett. He said, yep, that's something the team is working on. Yes. So that'll be cool. Uh, yeah. That, I was talking with a couple of my friends the other, like, a couple weeks ago, and and we were discussing it would it would be great if like you know the nightfall or certain parts of the raid or you know just finishing a big milestone mm-hmm. or something you know like nightfall i think is a great example let's say from the prestige like maybe you finish the prestige like you're guaranteed you know a weapon or an armor or one yeah. of each or something yeah. you know the thing is, is too, even in the Masterworks current state, you know, there's, there's not a ton of depth to it. Um, but it does add, uh, replayability and, and, you know, a fun grind to the game. I and, mean, I, I wasn't even pulling, uh, my engrams from Soraya until mm-hmm. the Masterworks came. Now I right, go and get yeah, them. Cause yeah. I was just getting dupes of stuff. Like I didn't, mm-hmm. I didn't need well, the light level stuff. I didn't, there wasn't anything yeah. I was really going to get out of them. It adds just that little bit of excitement to it, man. At least gives me a roll. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And a few weeks ago, I, dude, I got like six of them. And now I think I've gotten like three in the last four weeks. And the thing nice. is, is this to me, um, is, you know, I'm trying, I don't even have a full set yet. I'm, I've still got a, uh, I'm yeah, only setting either. on like three right now. I've got and some cores. I could make a set, but, uh, yeah. I'm like, I always have that analysis paralysis. Like I never yeah. spend my currencies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing, the thing for me is like you mentioned, and and um, uh, I use an example like the nightfall. And I think Joe on the admin team he messaged me and said um, he thinks it would be cool if you got a guaranteed one guaranteed masterwork from each milestone completion each week. And your initial thought is, wow, that'd be a lot of masterworks. But at the same time, I'm not getting very many of them. And this goes back to like D1 days when we, the crucible used to be real stingy. And dude, I mean, mm-hmm. you remember the crucible mm-hmm. back in the day? Now you just get yeah. crazy amounts of blues. You get legendary. Sometimes you get an Ingram. Right. I got an exotic the other day, Ingram. To me, you could almost just, just 
give us tons of masterworks. Give us, we're going to break them down. We're going to get the cores. It takes 10 to put in a weapon. It takes five to put into armor. I've got four different sets of gear. Like don't, this kind of goes back to those days. Don't be stingy with it. We want to grind for them. Just give them to us. We'll play the game. Give us reasons to play, you know. Uh, even if you gave us one, yeah. imagine one for every milestone you completed. That would get people logging back in, completing their milestones to get their mas- guaranteed masterwork to break it down to put it in the gear that they uh, want to put it into, you know. Instead of, I've only got, and I'm still really enjoying it. Don't get me wrong. This goes back to the conversation, like, don't give everything all at once, and then we have nothing to grind for. But I, I feel like there's certain layers of it you can just shower us with stuff because it, we're 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 probably gonna break it down and get one to three cores, a heavy lean towards one, as we all know, one core, uh, and it takes ten to put in a weapon, man. So I don't know. I uh, I like Masterworks. I like them in their current state, and and they've said many times this is version one v one of what they're gonna be. So just yeah. more reasons to play, dude. Yeah, and I think they're um, they're they're kind of getting the rewarding aspect back in line with mm-hmm. kind of where they where they set us at the end of D one, um, where you know you you were able just to get a lot of stuff in a lot of different ways, and you didn't ever feel like the game was being stingy with it with you. And so I think we're getting to a point where things are more rewarding, or you just get a larger volume of of rolls on stuff which also always gives you more chances of, at things like masterworks. And I'm sure that they can, uh, I, I'm sure their, their investment team is probably looking at, you know, where, where can we deliver this particular reward? Like what should guarantee it or et cetera. Um, yeah. So it's, you don't feel like masterworks are so common that they're just like legendaries, but you get, you have some straightforward ways to getting them because that's, that's one thing that they were able to kind of finally work out in D1 is introduce straightforward ways to get some things, you know? And I feel like they, they took that to an extreme in some ways right. in Destiny 2. Uh, they, they could have tuned down a little bit, you know, especially with the clan engrams, but um, they're, they're definitely in a, in a, I guess come into a place where you, you get a lot more options on how you can get stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so you always feel like your time is well spent. It's funny. <laughs> I, we do not have to go down this road, but it's funny. You mentioned cleaning grams. I thought about those again this week and I listened to, uh, I forget what I was listening to that, that, uh, had me thinking about them again. Um, we had that conversation a long time ago and I, and I think, uh, we ultimately decided like, Ah, who cares? You know, uh, somebody can't get a team together. They can't run the raid. Um, and that's all well and good and that's all fine. But I do think, um, whatever you think about cleaning grams from the raid specifically or trials, I do think it did or does take some like exclusive feeling away from those activities. And again, this conversation that directly affects, uh, grind motivation. You know, yeah. replayability, yeah. motivation. And I'm not saying I don't want everyone to be able to get those things if they can't get a team together. Um, I'm just simply stating that I think things like that um, can and and um, may have affected um, some of those things, you know, some of those feelings um, that players yeah. players got. But we don't have to go down that road. It's just funny you mentioned that because I, I did think about those those things again this week. I'm not saying there's, I don't log in and go, go to that, Hawthorne every week. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot that goes into it that they have to think about when they yep. make changes. It's not as easy as just like, yeah, let's just, let's, you can get it all from all these things and you can just, we just shower everything on you all the time. It's because that impacts like the longer term yes. experience of the game. It's like, you know, if you can literally just get everything in one reset you know, what's there to come back to? Like, well, there's a game and it's fun, but part of the fun is the loot. Like you take that away. It takes out. And what you have to do to get the loot. Yeah. It takes out a core part of the experience. So it's a, I think it's a tough balance. I think in some ways they, you know, they kind of ran an experience or an, excuse me, an experiment. Um, and they may have to make some, some changes, some of those variables to make it more, Mm-hmm. realistic like for a long-term experience of the game which is what they're promising right well so 
Yeah. Anyway, well, we went way off on tangent. We did. There. We can do that. Um, they know that though. <laughs> so that's the news. Uh, yes. But real quick before we when we move into our reset, um, I want to give a quick plug to our sponsor for the show. That's Audible. Audible.com. And for our listeners of DRP, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30 day trial to give you an opportunity to check out Audible. Uh, if you're not familiar, Audible is a service that allows you to uh, download and listen to books read aloud to you, which is awesome if you spend time commuting to work or to school um, or you, you're you not great with just being able to sit down and read a book. <laughs> like I can, I can, I actually really prefer to read books in print, mm-hmm. but if I try to like read a book at the end of the day, like <laughs> I I get so drowsy, dude. Dude, I I, I can't. Do I fall it. asleep <laughs> sitting still for thirty seconds. If I throw a book into the mix, I'm out. Oh, yeah. e- even if it's yeah. the most interesting and I want to read it, I'm out in fifteen seconds. <laughs> but yeah. listening to something just engages, I guess the uh, you know just the, the part of your brain that's kind of keeping mm-hmm. you interacting with something. I suppose. And uh, a fun fact is you can actually process auditory information a lot quicker than written word. Did you know that? No. The more you know. That's why you can, like, listen to a book at 1.5 times speed and still roll with it when you get used to it. Anyways. (laughs) Yeah, I know. I always find that funny uh, with YouTube videos that are, like, longer and the uh, yeah. creator says, you may want to do this in 1.25 or 1.5. And I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, we got a couple of recommendations if you're interested and you just want a good book to listen to. Uh, we got a couple of books we could recommend. Mine is a book called Shoe Dog, which is the memoir of the gentleman who founded Nike, um, which sounds, you know, at its face. Okay, that could be interesting. But this book was amazing. Um, this guy lived a really interesting life, and the whole journey of how Nike was founded uh, was shocking at times. Like, <laughs> like the, this. I mean, Nike is one of the biggest, most recognizable companies in the world. Mm-hmm. But he started it in the '60s out of his car, you know, out of the trunk of his car, and um, it, it tells the story of you know just from high school until like 1974 or something, I think when they went public um, successfully for the first time Um, and the whole road and and how that happened. And uh, it was really fascinating. There are parts of the book that like just elicited like serious emotion from me after I was invested in it. Yeah. Uh, I would check it out if you, if you're into, business if you're just into um autobiographies or things of that nature uh i just i so enjoyed the book i wish that it was twice as long by the time i got to the end of it so i would check that out what's a book that you would recommend arrow hey i got um uh recommended uh by a co-worker uh, a book called good profit by charles coke um Yes, uh, the, the little snippet is how creating value for others built one of the world's most successful companies. Nice. Um, yeah, so, so business books this week. Yes, yeah, business books this week. So, <laughs> anyways, um, uh, that's probably up next on my list. Um, I, nice. I'm actually, uh, I don't know all the details about it yet, but I've heard it is a fantastic read, and um, that's probably in my top few coming up. So. Awesome, man. Yeah, so yes. if you're interested in taking advantage of your free audiobook, go to audibletrial.com slash destiny reset. Uh, There's no strings attached to deal, too. If, if you just want to try it and get a free book out of it, you can cancel your trial. You still get to keep your book. Um, so there, there's no way to lose here, except for if you don't listen to the book. <laughs> <laughs> the, only, uh, That's all right. the only knowledge can't gain is the knowledge you don't try to gain um so go check it out again audibletrial.com slash destiny reset 
And of course, if you take advantage of that, it does support the show. So thank you in advance. Thank you. Hey, Cyborg. So, yes. I gotcha. I've gotcha been waiting for a few weeks for you to. I had to jump in. How was your reset, your buddy? <laughs> it was good. It was good. I didn't get to play as much Iron Banner as I had planned, uh, but I did get in some Iron Banner. I got in some Knight Falls, um, <laughs> the old Pyramidian this week, and got a challenge card. I don't know if it popped up last week in my inventory and I didn't notice it, but I did have it this week, and I, but I, I, have, I didn't get a chance to run it as a challenge because uh, everybody's afraid of that Extinguish perk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. But I'm going to try to do it before reset. Um, but had some good time in some Iron Banner matches, good and bad. Got to play some on the, uh, the, the I guess, what is the uh, the new name for Burnout? D1. Yeah, is it Burnout? Came out for is me too, man. Now? Yep. Yeah, Several I played times. a few matches there. Good times. Good times on Burnout. There's just some subtle changes on there. I, I love it. There's some subtle changes in some of the like pathways and stuff that throw me off. <laughs> yeah, there's <laughs> just a little bit so different much. in some places. Yep. It, it's like, I don't know the word to describe it. It's like everything is a little a little more blurry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like this, Darker. no joke, like this rock or shapes, nod to ninja, is like out just a little further than it used yeah. to be and, and there's, it's like there's totally not messes like with me the hard edges mm-hmm. like with everything kind of like rubbleized like it's you can't like dip in but like in and out of cover the same right you know there's just like those little subtle tweaks that make it like a more fluid map to play in like you just have to move around more uh-huh. you know yep it's fun though it's a good it map fun. yeah i'm glad it's back i had a pretty good I just always love when I get like a really good super chain going. Like I knocked out three of the team and then ran to find the other guy and then two of them spawn. I threw a grenade, killed one, sm- smashed a guy that just rezzed, <laughs> and they finally killed me. I killed like I got like six kills on one super. Feels good, man. Nice. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I love running Striker time. Titan. What can I say? It's a lot of fun in Destiny too. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, that I mean, so I played some of that. I got in some Fortnite. Uh, played a little bit of solo games, uh, mm. trying to do some challenges and stuff, like catch up on some of that. And uh, haven't get, solo is giving me a little bit better uh, venue to improve some of my skill in there because mm-hmm. I'm not good at this game at Fortnite. <laughs> Dude, I'm because you too. there's like some fast twitch stuff that you got to be able to pull off sometimes mm-hmm. that's like you either do or die and so playing solo allows me to focus a little more i think uh on at least just one opponent at a time <laughs> yeah yeah and kind of kind of brush up on you know solo's a little, little better like too. shotgun headshots and mm-hmm. crossbow shots and stuff like that uh and then did a little duos last night. My buddy Darth Digits. We got a battle royale, a little victory nice. royale. Very nice. Whatever they call it, royale with cheese. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so did some of that. And I was trying, I was planning to play the Sea of Thieves beta. Um, and it like filled up really quick. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Before I was even able to get on Friday. And then I tried to just jump on by myself Saturday and it, it wouldn't let me. So did not get to play that. Yeah, I saw that. I did see that. Yeah. So. What what have you been playing this week, man? How was your reset? Well, I will start, since you were just talking about it, I'll start with, uh, I played a lot of Destiny this week, but I'll start with Fortnite um, because you're talking about solo queuing. I'd mostly, uh, I've played some squads and a few duos, uh, but mm-hmm. I've mostly solo queued. Um, and I, I've mentioned already, uh, I think last episode, episode before that I've, I've like fully jumped into Fortnite now. It is, it's got me. And, uh, man, I'm looking up, I can't remember what I mentioned last week, but I'm looking up videos, um, working on these things. Uh-huh. It feels so weird to be such a noob, you know? Cause like when I go into destiny, we've been playing it for so long. I know the maps. I know when I can hip fire. I know when I need to ABS. Yeah. I know when to look at my radar, you know, all these things that you take for granted. We've been playing the game for so long. Fortnite, I, I like panic and I, 
and I don't know. Oh, yeah. In Destiny, I know what I'm gonna do, like uh, before totally I'm even you. done getting you know You're with this engagement with this a guy. New skill set. Yeah, so like I, in Fortnite, I'm like, I don't know what I should be doing right now. Like, yeah. okay, so now I've learned if somebody shoots at me, I need to build immediately. Yeah, and you know, it's I'm, like changing that reflex because. Yeah. Yep. I, my reflex is not to play defensively that way, and that's mm-hmm. but that's the only way to really like live and last in that game. Yeah, yeah. And I still like I just die the most just deciding I'm gonna have a shoot off. Like, right? Yep. <laughs> like, yeah, no, I can win this. Just no, few it's like, no, you can't win that. <laughs> you just don't yep. realize it. Like, whoever shoots first is going to win. Mm-hmm. Um. And I'm just yep. not used to that always being the case, so I'm having to train myself to have yeah. like build defensively as my reflex. Like I'm with you. It is fun to be such a noob again because like I'm I'm totally diving in and I'm trying to work on these things and fix them. And I I can't remember if I mentioned last week, but I I had to remap my my PS4 button so that I could play on Bumper Jumper. So I changed. Mm-hmm. L1 and X. Um, so I'm, I'm finally getting used to that. I'm organizing my inventory now certain ways, um, working on that uh, hunting rifle um, stuff. So I, I'm definitely, it's it's so weird because just in a week or two's time, I can see myself, I can, I can see that I'm getting better, you know, and it's fun uh, just because, you know, uh, we've been playing Destiny so long, like the the amounts of getting better, you know, there's always room to improve, but it's so fine tuned. We've been playing Destiny so long. Fortnite, I'm just bad, you know, <laughs> so it's no, like you, buddy. there's nothing but much improvement that can be had. But I'm having yeah. a blast in it, man. Um, I'll tell you one thing, though, getting used to that sensitivity Mm-hmm. has like when i'm jumping back on destiny i'm having to up my sensitivity because i'm like this is too slow yeah. like my I stick actually, is too slow yeah. <laughs> i actually slow right now just just this weekend um i was trying to play on high sensitivity like i normally do and i i slowed it down because i'm like i've got to i've got to get comfortable with these 1v1 engagements and I could tell I was over correcting. Um, so I'm like, I'm going to get comfortable in a slower setting and then I'm going to slowly speed it back up. Um, but I could definitely see that because you go in, it, I mean, it feels fast, even like halfway, even on yep. five or something, it feels super quick. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyways, yeah, Fortnite, having a good time in Fortnite. Um, played pretty decent amount of Iron Banner this week. I wanted the auto rifle. Um, yeah, I don't have that it, yet. Yeah, it's got some decent perks. It's got some pretty good perks on it, man. And uh, uh, the pulse, you know, it's a slow firing pulse. Uh, I'm not big on slow firing pulses. I can't wait till after the March update because um, pulses are getting getting a buff like many things. So uh, I'm gonna whip out some of the uh, some of the old pulses. But um, this auto looks looks really good. I did get it. Um, you have to have 60 tokens. I man, I played. I think my I played many many matches. My my like season two percentage is at like seventy something now. So I, I fit in a few matches this week, um, but uh, I was glad to pick that up. And then, uh, like I said, I uh, I think I mentioned I did complete another Osiris verse, um, and I've mentioned several times already. But I I finished my Sunbreaker build for pve so i now have i've I've been making these mini games and i've been having a blast with it dude i I now have a set a full set of gear for my void uh my bubble titan uh my striker titan which is pvp uh my sunbreaker i have one for pve and pvp and my pvp one is my full set of iron banner gear and then i have my full set of dead orbit which is also striker titan so i've like fine-tuned my gear inventory to where i just swap on my gear set depending on what i'm going to be doing in the game and i'm totally nerding out on it because it's fantastic (laughs) Uh, but uh you know just making those making those uh little mini games inside the game so it's kind of nice to have all (laughs) now now i will say some of them do not have slotted mods uh, the correct slotted mod in them i'm still working on that uh, and uh, getting my full set of masterwork armor, I, I'm shy. A uh, mark, my mark is not a masterwork yet. Um, but and I'm still 334, yeah, I dude. I cannot get a chess piece 
and a mark to drop for me. Actually, all I need in the mark is a is a legendary mod, and I'm good. Uh, I have one, but I I'm just not putting it in there until I get uh, my void one. Um, mm-hmm. But I I can't get a chess piece to drop for me. Uh, I'm like forever three thirty four right now. That that's stinks. Okay. That's all right. Go run the raids. <laughs> yeah, I mean we we know that if I could hit three thirty five, I'll be able to kill everything in the game way quicker. Oh yeah, right? that's a big difference. <laughs> let me tell yeah. you. Sorry. Just being Maybe facetious. they'll fix that with the fall update. <laughs> yeah. Just kidding. Anyways, oh, that's my reset, man. Good, Got in man. some games this week. Yeah. We're still gaming. We're doing it. Um, We got some Dirt Fam discourse. We got an email. Yeah. You want me to read it? Do you want to read it? I'll read it. Shadow Strike 623. Subject. The Mida Meta. Patron. That's right. Uh, he writes, Dear Cyborg and Arrow, anticipating the March 27th sandbox changes, I've been thinking about the current meta. I've noticed that some weapons, which were very common in the Crucible during the first four months of Destiny 2, Mida, Nameless Midnight, Last Hope, Better Devils, seem to be far less common today, while others, particularly auto rifles like Uriel's and Origin Story, are still as common as they were in the beginning. Have you noticed the same thing? If so, what has changed? Did the arrival of Curse of Osiris weapons such as Positive Outlook change the gameplay? Or are players just shifting their preferences as they learn the game? It's fascinating to me that behaviors could be changing without any actual changes to the meta. But my observations could be wrong. Let me know what you think. Your fan, Shadow Strike 623 Well, thanks for the email. Mm -hmm. What do you think? What do you think is the, uh, the reason behind these... I don't know. This is such a good question and observation. It's I thought about this. Um, it is really weird, you know, with especially with all the feedback, uh, specifically the Crucible um, and PvP's gotten um, in Destiny Two. Um, you know, do you? I mean, it wasn't that long ago. Everyone was using Mida, and everyone was many, many, many Guardians were saying Mida needed a nerf like instantly. Um, yeah. And you're right. There's not many Midas out there right now, but it's still just as potent and just as effective. And, mm-hmm. you know, to Bungie's credit, they knew that there were many other viable options in the current state of the PvP, um, uh, you know, sandbox to use. You know, I was just using Nameless Midnight uh, the other night. I do still like that um, paired with, mm-hmm. you know, a submachine gun or something. But, uh, yeah, Last Hope, that one was super potent. You know, PV or uh, excuse me, PC... Changed it up a bit because you see a lot more hand cannons, cannons on PC. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you, you probably see a lot more better devils and uh, um, other hand cannons uh, on PC. But you're right. You know, like when I go into the Crucible right now, it's Antiope and Uriel's or Positive Outlook for me. And, yeah. um, you know, many run that. This is such a tricky question because I, the reason I brought up the feedback the Crucible has gotten, while... Many, many of the feedback, much of the feedback they've gotten has been that it's stagnant, it's slow, it's not fun um, compared to what Destiny 1 was. A lot of the weapons are viable. And we don't see a lot of the same weapons being used, give or take, you know, like an Antiope or something. Um, And I think it... I hadn't really thought about this until you sent this email, but it is interesting. There's been no change in the sandbox, and all of these preferences have changed. Um, I don't know. It's it's interesting. I think there's, you know, call it there's not a lot of potent perks on the weapons like we talked about earlier in the show. Maybe that's part of it. A lot of them mm. are just average weapons, and mm. the time to kill is the same, but... I don't know. I mean, it's. I, th- I think it's. It's just the state of the crucible, and I don't know that it's a bad thing. I, I, no, really I think don't it's know good, it's and uh, yeah. Curse of Osiris probably played a, a bit of a role in getting people to try out some different Mix guns. It up. Yeah, and then I think that the players that stick around, like that, you're not just going to play the same gun forever and ever. Like you're going to mm-hmm. explore, and you're going to try other stuff, and you know, logically you're going to see that there are other options out there and people find guns that they like. They find play styles. They like, um, that 
don't always have to fit into a cookie cutter loadout like Mida and Last Hope or something, Mm -hmm. you know. Um, I think it's just the maturation of the player base. (laughs) Right, (laughs) yeah. And I think that the more people that are playing, like if you, when when a quote-unquote meta emerges in the Crucible, you go into the Crucible and you're getting killed by the same gun over and over. Thus, you pick up that gun because you view it as effective, mm-hmm. and that cycle continues. So the more people playing and the more people following a meta, the stronger it becomes. As less people are playing and less people are using the same guns, those metas kind of fade away, and you see other, you know, you see more variety, and you're less inclined to follow the trend. Right. I think that's part of it, but. Yeah. You know, they, at least they were smart enough not to just, like you said, not to just knee jerk, you know, react to the trends and, and nerf yeah. whatever was popular. It's sometimes mm-hmm. things are just popular and that's it. Yeah. Yep. You know, and you could call it, again, uh, boring weapons. You could call it extremely balanced weapons. Um, there's a couple of different ways to look at it. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and everybody's pretty much a creature of habit. Like you said, I'm, I'm still jumping in right now with, probably maybe two different loadouts um you know once you get kind of set in your ways um but there's sure. there's there's many options um like i said i just used nameless again this week in iron banner i think and uh that gun is still strong. good yeah actually i even to to talk about it to to break it the mold a little bit more cuz you you still see it just like destiny 1 every now and then um i was getting hammered with jade rabbit the other day I whipped that thing out, dude. Even in Destiny 2, it feels just like Destiny 1. If you can hit those headshots, that thing is a beast. And you can just feel the other player, the other guardian when you kill him with it. You can, you can just hear them, dude. They're like, what is he hitting me with that hard? That, that gun is, it's fun to use if you can land those precision, precision know, shots. Man. Feels kind of weak to me, but. I was using I, it. I never played it in Destiny One. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I dude, it's the same in Destiny One. We were playing Trials. I knew when someone was hitting me with Jade Rabbit, and when they were getting those crits. It's the same in Destiny Two. And I, I don't know if I was just getting lucky because I didn't use it a lot in Destiny One, but I used it a little bit in Iron Banner this week, and I was I was getting some of those headshots. And you can, dude, it just melts if you can do it. If now if you can't, it's it's not worth the exotic slot. Um, yeah. But, uh, anyways, I'll play with it some more. Great email. Great yeah, thanks email. for the email. If uh, if you've got some Derp Fam discourse, maybe you've got a question, a uh, comment on something we've talked about in the show, or a shout out for something awesome you've seen in the community, send it to us, Destiny Reset Podcast at gmail.com, or leave us a, a message via voice at speakpipe.com slash Destiny Reset, and we'll play it on the show. We always love your feedback. Please send it yes, to us. Please do. We got any new patrons this month or week? Excuse me. We do not this week. We've got still okay. a few pending. Check your messages, guys. We've uh, reminded you yes. of that. If you can, check your messages. But uh, we you know, thank all of you that already are Dirt Fan patrons. We appreciate it. Absolutely. If you don't know what patrons are, go to Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Destiny Reset, where for as little as a dollar a month, you can support the production budget of our show and you get a few perks along with it. You get a shout out on the show, you get your gamer tag posted on our website and you get an invitation to our channel just for our patrons where you get unfettered access to cyborg and air Knight. It's seriously the best. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really kind of crazy. Uh, but uh, yeah thanks to all of our existing patrons we really appreciate what you do it helps support the show and helps us make it better Thank also you. if you want to leave us a tip you can do that on our website we've got a link to PayPal if you just want to give us a, a one time tip dollar, two dollars five dollars, whatever people do that too and we appreciate that thank you guys so much alright man where can people find you you can find me on Twitter at the Arrow Knights and on YouTube and Twitch. It's Arrow Knights. What about you, buddy? At Cyborg Sasquatch on Twitter and Twitch. 
Finally, you can find us at Destiny Reset on Twitter. Drop us a follow. Also, you can see us on the World Wide Web at www.destinyresetpodcast.com. It's your source for all things DRP, including links to subscribe to us on your favorite podcast app of choice. There you go. Uh, iTunes reviews. We do not have any new ones this week. So we like to take this opportunity to thank the 152 of you in the U.S. and the many, many more in many other countries. We thank you so much for your reviews. Absolutely. And if you haven't left us a review, please do. If you listen on iTunes, go drop us an honest review. We appreciate your opinions. And it also gets us help seen by more listeners looking for Destiny podcasts just like you. Exactly. We don't have an event coming up. This next reset, do we? It's not Faction Rally, right? It's going to be like a regular a faction old rally. reset. Regular old reset. Yep. Do your milestones. You know it. <laughs> All right, man. All right, buddy. Yeah, well, you know, we'll play. We'll probably squeeze in some more Fortnite. Yep. Um, but got to play that Destinies. Next week, we'll return to talk about more Destiny, yes. as always. <laughs> All right, guys. Until next week, have fun playing Destiny 2. And take care, Guardians.